Tonight's Our World. In 1935, the writer Graham Greene set off on a journey through Sierra Leone and Liberia in West Africa. He wrote a book about his experience. He found disease and corruption, missionaries and witchcraft. More than 70 years later, I followed in his footsteps. I wanted to see what had got better and what was worse and how things had changed. Kissy Street, Freetown, capital of Sierra Leone. So busy and vibrant. You wouldn't have thought that this is a country still recovering from a long civil war. But then, Green saw a great difference between the interior to where we're heading and the coast where we are now. He described Freetown as an English capital city of tin shacks and Remembrance Day posters. It was run by the British then, of course. Now, Britain is helping its old colony back onto its feet after the war. Throughout his journey, Green kept asking what we, in the West, wanted to achieve in Africa, even back then. Many of us are asking the same today. What needs to be done and how best to do it? Is the West failing in Africa or does Africa with its poverty and wars fail itself. Graham Greene began his journey without maps right here on what used to be a railway line that ran into the interior of the country. It was built by the British colonial government to move trade and people backwards and forwards. After independence, it fell into disrepair and then closed down altogether. The only way to get there now is by road. They're not in bad shape as you leave town, but it doesn't last. Just moving from one place to another can become a nightmare. We keep seeing remnants of the old railway. It would have been 227 miles of smooth journey then. Graham Greene's train passed along these rail tracks to get to the other end of the country to Pendembu. But look at it now. And what government would let the main arterial rail track into the interior just collapse like this and fall into this state of disrepair? This is where Green got off the train, Pendembu Station, in what was once a bustling market town near the Liberian border. It's deep in Sierra Leone's eastern district where the war started, partly because people here felt so cut off from their government. They still do. The district capital is Kenema, with half a million people. Many families moved here because of the railway and the diamond mines. The hospital was once the centerpiece of health care. Nothing is working in here. Nothing is working here. A common refrain, but life-threatening in a rundown operating theatre. When there is no light, we use this lamp to see our way. A brother and sister have malaria, but although science has moved on and there are drugs to treat it, few have found their way to this hospital. 
In fact, the shelves of the pharmacy are bare. That's for malaria, is it? So where are the malaria drugs? That's, That's bad. Yeah. Drug after drug turns out not to have been replaced or to have vanished amid allegations of theft and corruption. Yet the government publishes a detailed list of all essential medicines needed for health care. This is the National Essential Medicine List of Sierra Leone. You're familiar with this list, are you? I'm familiar with it. And it has, as you can see, lots of drugs on it. Yes. Do you have all these drugs in stock? No, sir. You don't? We don't have it. Why not? They don't supply us. They make their requisition there. They send, we already receive drugs from here. The responsibility of sending drugs is rest on the medical center, medical stores. For a time, the future looked bright. In 1961, Sierra Leone became an independent democracy. Its raw materials, such as diamonds, should have created wealth for the people. Right, Baba. Yes, I make this 93 pounds. No. Yes, you want? If you want to buy, we'll give you 100 pounds. No, eat too far. Eat too far. Money no come out. Money no come out, Baba. Instead, they were a cause of war. That Britain intervened to stop. It might have forced a peace, but can or should it do more? We travel deeper into the interior to find out more about how this country is rebuilding itself and how millions of dollars of Western aid money is being spent. On this same route, Green described driving wildly on a road like a farm track, and the lorry not going much more than 20 miles an hour. We do no better. Aid money hasn't yet reached these roads and with consequences. A truck plunged through a makeshift bridge. It's carrying mosquito nets. And yet this is still the main road east, and a decade ago the war that began here prompted the huge British-led initiative to mend things. Forty-four aid agencies are listed as working in the small town of Kailuhun. It's difficult to see where. Nothing's being rebuilt, there's no electricity, and the price of fuel and food have risen because of the closed road we managed to get through. The hospital, too, is running out of drugs. It put in an order more than six months ago. You've ordered the drugs in October, yes. and they still haven't arrived. I said some are here. But some are not. Yes. And the, the essential ones are not. Yes. That's terrible. Mom, how do we come? It's just a matter of time where the drugs will come. What, nine months? Well, I cannot say much because that is not my own. But it's, it's, not, work. it's not a good situation, is it's it? It's true, it's true. But I know the drugs will surely come. We are waiting. Hanging around unemployed are the former child soldiers, now young men who are becoming restless and angry. No one you ask here without hunger, no. <laughs> because why? People we are people we are hang people here without no job. People here without uh, 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 employment and some people here have responsibilities, have wives, children, you know. And no money. Yeah, no money, no money, you see. So how you, you expect some that people to live their own life, you see. This part of Sierra Leone, the eastern part of Sierra Leone, was where the rebels had their bases, their largest, their big bases. So after the war, most of these young men, when they came back from the bush, they are just roaming about. They were not properly demobilized. They are still passing. These are the people who are still causing havoc for us in this part of Sierra Leone. One teenage girl that the aid effort hasn't reached. Hajura was seven when the war ended. If I don't get banana, I can sell. 
Somebody say, Aja, Aja, let go. I should do it. thing. Say, I get money for, for you. I say, which money? Say, pass go. Yeah, you know the big empty man. I like it. Yeah, give five blocks, then I agree. Give 2,000. Pass that go to the door with you. At night, Hajura works the bars, selling herself time and time and time again in her struggle to survive. The next morning, she tells how she had sex with seven men, her total earnings just five dollars. We've secured the peace. Building the, um, the development and fighting poverty in Sierra Leone is going to take a long time. It's a complex country. Anybody who says it's easy has not been to Sierra Leone or been to West Africa. Both parties should take responsibility, defeat and then government. 